ladies and gentlemen, it pays to be ignorant. How? How can you make a woman keep her mouth shut? Put glue in her lipstick. Pay the man eight dollars. How can you cool off a motor? Strip the gears. Pay the man nine dollars because... It's pay to be ignorant, to be dumb, to be dead, to be ignorant. And now, friends, it's time to meet your quiz master, and here he is, the star of our show, Mr. Tom Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Well, here again is that screwy quiz program that people are talking about, but I can't tell you what they're saying about it. We have a board of experts who are so dumb they think a shin guard is Hilliard's brother. First, first, we have to celebrate author Mr. High McNaughton, who has just written a book entitled, A Nayrad Sat on a Cactus or the Shriek of Araby. <laughs> Here he is, Mr. Harry McNaughton. Thank you. I, I have a poem, Mr. Nice Howard. Nice yes. I stood on the bridge at midnight when the wind was full of air when somebody pulled the bridge away and left me standing there. I, <laughs> I was all wet. I imagine. All right. You still are. All right. Next, we have a woman whose husband calls her his little mouse because she looks like something the cat dragged in. <laughs> a woman who was scared by a vacuum cleaner. She's been a windbag ever since. <laughs> Next, Lulu McConnell. Well, Mr. Howard, I had another fight with my old man this morning. You had a fight? How did it start? Well, he got sore because I poured coffee in his ear. I see. You, uh, you poured coffee in his ear? Mm. Why didn't you pour it down his throat? Oh, no. That's his T-zone. That's his T-zone. <laughs> well, let's get on. Here, next we have a man who set a record when at school. He was the only one in the second grade old enough to vote. A man, a man who talks right from the shoulder because that's where his mouth is. Mr. George Shelton. Yeah, I just got a letter from my Uncle Webfoot this morning. Yeah. Boy, he's very sick. I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Well, Christmas Eve, he was playing Santa Claus. Yeah. So he tried to come down the chimney. And? He came down with the flu. He came down with the flu. <laughs> yeah. Well, those are the experts, folks, so we'll pause for a second while you all say who cares. In the meantime, here's the first question. Let's see if we can get an answer. Yes. The musical scale has eight notes. It starts with Do, Re, Mi. Can you tell me the name of the first three notes? Mr. Howard, that's a musical question, isn't it? That's right. Do you know anything about music? Do I? Ho, oh, ho. Why, when I was three years old, I used to play on the linoleum. On the linoleum. <laughs> I, I was in a floor show. You were in a floor show. Why not? Please, Mr. Sheldon, do you know what a scale is? Sure, a freckle on a fish. A freckle on a fish. <laughs> About the musical scale. Oh, I say, by the way, talking about music, I went to a concert last night. The University Five played Beethoven. They did. Yeah. Beethoven lost. Beethoven lost. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to see that game. Yeah. I love basketball. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, Mr. Sheldon, it must be hard to be a moron. It certainly is, and we're proud of you, Mr. Howard. <laughs> Look, the musical scale has eight notes. There are four notes to a bar. You know what a bar is, Miss McConnell? <laughs> are you kidding? All right. <laughs> Can you give me the first note in the scale, uh, Mr. Sheldon? Sure, don't. No, that's right. Can you give me the second note? No, the second note ain't due yet. The second note is <laughs> I haven't heard from Morris. You haven't heard from Morris. Right? <laughs> do, you name, do you know the name of the second note, Miss McConnell? Certainly. The second note is Ray. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't ask me. I see. I don't speak what I've spoken to. Uh -huh. I'm the silent type. You're the silent type. Why, when I was a baby, I didn't speak until I was five years old. You didn't speak until you were five years old? Well, why was that? I didn't have anything to say. No, I... <laughs> well, you certainly have made up for lost time. Do you know the name of the third note? Sure, the third note is me. Fine, fine. Boy, oh, you're smart, Miss McCarthy. Yes. I know, and I know I'm smart. I'm not just a glamour girl. I see. You're not just a girl, either. 
Well, you know, Miss McConnell, I never knew the third note was you. The third note is not you. I know it's not. It's Miss McConnell. Please. <laughs> the third note is me. Oh, it's you. <laughs> I thought Miss McConnell said it was her. No, she said it was me. Mr. Howard just said it was him. I didn't say it was him. He said it was me. All right, I don't care who it is, as long as it isn't me. <laughs> but it is. You mean it's me? That's right, it's me. Now, wait a minute. Now, look. Say, don't you see, when Miss McConnell said the third note was me, she didn't mean it was her. She didn't? No, she meant it was me. <laughs> well, when was it me? It's always been me. Mr. Howard, have you tried penicillin? <laughs> There are eight notes in the musical scale. Do, re, me, fa, sol, la, si, do. Do on the top and do on the bottom. Just like a pie. Just like a pie. <laughs> All right, what comes in between? Raisins. Raisins. <laughs> what do you mean, raisins? We're not talking about pies. Do, do, get that into your nuts. Do. Oh, I have it, Mr. Howard. Donut. Donut. <laughs> Will you step in here and take over while I take a sedative? I certainly will do that, Mr. Howard. Tom Howard and the experts will be back in a minute to interview our first guest. And now, then, who is our first guest? Well, Mr. Howard, we have a very, very nice young man coming to our microphone, and I should like to introduce to you Seaman First Class, Corrado Orestes Corsi, Jr. of the United States Navy. Well, that's fine. Fine. Can I, if you, how do you do, sir? Would you repeat that name again? I didn't quite get yes, it. Yes, uh, this is Seaman First Class, Corrado Orestes Corsi, Jr. Why, sounds like a prescription my doctor gave me. <laughs> well, we're very glad to have you. What do the boys in the Navy call you? Corsi. Corsi. Do you mind if I call you Corsi? Yes, sir. Good. I have a lot of trouble with any word over two syllables. You'll have to pardon me. Well, we're very nice. To, it's very nice of you to come up, Corsi, and we're very glad to have you. Uh, where's your hometown, would you mind telling me? Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. Well, very good. Well, Providence, Rhode Island. Well, feed me some Nabiscos and call me a wisecracker. Hey, you look like... I, I used to work in that town. I imagine. Oh, yeah, I was an eye doctor in a florist shop. You, uh, you were an eye doctor in a florist shop? I took care of the black-eyed Susans. Uh, <laughs> all right. Never mind. Just ignore what you hear, Corsi. Uh, tell me, how do you happen to be in New York uh, at this time, Corsi? Well, I'm stationed on Wall Street. You're stationed on Wall Street? Uh, are you on a boat? Yes, sir. On Wall Street? Yes, sir. I see. How did the boat get up Wall Street? <laughs> well, it's at the foot of Wall Street. Oh, at the foot of Wall Street. They I floated it up there on a loan. I <laughs> Uh, please. Uh, <laughs> Miss McConnell, your old man has never worked, has, has he? No. If he only had learned a trade. What would it do good to learn a trade if he's never worked? Well, at least I'd know what kind of a job he was out of. I see. <laughs> uh, tell me, Corsi, uh, how long have you been in the Navy? Oh, approximately two years. Two years, I see. Uh, why do you do that? Is what is your particular job on the boat? Do you have any particular? What do you do? Well, there's not much except paint and scrape and scrape and paint. Oh. <laughs> paint and scrape and scrape and paint. Your report. I see. Well, uh, I guess that keeps you pretty busy. Is that it? Well, quite busy. Yeah. I see. I see. You have a uh, some. Uh, uh, what are they, uh, chevrons? What do you call them on your arm there? What are they? Oh, just strike, right. seaman first class. Oh, seaman first class. Well, you're, you're, you're right. And they make a seaman first class, you have to paint and scrape and scrape and paint? Say, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Corsi, Miss McConnell needs a paint and scrape and Mr. Sheldon, in order to paint and scrape Miss McConnell, we'll have to put her in dry dock first. I think, you know, you know, Corsi, you know, I, uh, good evening, how are you? I, I was in the Navy, you know. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, many years ago. I was, I was on a submarine. Submarine? Yeah, but they transferred me. Yeah, why did they transfer you? I used to sleep with my windows open. Your windows. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, tell me, uh, Corsi, uh, are you married? No, sir. You're not married. Well, what did he say? He, he said, said he that, wasn't married. He said he wasn't uh -huh. married. Well, I'll take over from here. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, surely, surely, Corsi, you have a girl someplace. Yes, so, I have. In Providence? Yes, sir. Well, sure, I, I knew you'd have a girl. That, that would only be an act of Providence. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> a girl. <laughs> We're sure you had one. Well, it's certainly been a pleasure having you with us. We sure didn't... has. What's your first name, honey? Ah, please. Toronto. What? Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. Well, isn't that an unusual name? It is an unusual oh, name. Oh, such a fine boy. Isn't he a lovely chap, Mr. Howard? He's a nice, clean Oh, he country. really is. Is it maybe? Uh -huh. Yeah. By the 30 years younger, you'd never get back to that boat. Ah, <laughs> You just call me Electric Blanket. Yeah. Yeah. I'm nice and cozy. Yeah. <laughs> but your rear stat is all shot. Get down. Get down, you rock of the ship. Get yeah. <laughs> down, your cargo is shifting. Yeah. <laughs> this is enough. Well, we're very glad, as I said, to have had you with us, Corsi. Before you go, we'd love to have you reach into the dunce cap there and pick out a question for us. And would you be good enough to read the question, if you don't mind? To what great American president, to what great American president was Mrs. George Washington married? Thank you, sir. <laughs> to what great American president was Mrs. George Washington married? Mr. Howard, Democrat or Republican? <laughs> That doesn't make any difference. No, he did to Mr. Dewey. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I mean, it has nothing to do with the question. Was her first name Martha, Mr. Howard? That's right. Yeah, how did you know that? She was one of her bridesmaids. <laughs> I was not. I wasn't even invited to the wedding. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget my wedding day. Yeah. Never forget my wedding day. My father-in-law gave me an awful fright. Yeah, what was it? His daughter. <laughs> I almost got married once, but she married somebody else. She married somebody Boy, else. I was all broken up. Yeah, too bad they ever put you together again. Now, <laughs> please get back to the question. My old man was a janitor when I married him. He was a janitor? Yeah, he swept me off my feet. He did. <laughs> he must have used a snow plow. <laughs> What great American president, rather, to what great American president was Mrs. George Washington married? You know, speaking of marriage, Mr. Shelton, you really ought to get married, you know. Well, it's not really my fault. I asked the girl to marry me, and she says, ask my father. And did you ask her father? He wouldn't marry me either. <laughs> well, you know, I met, I met my wife at a travel bureau. Yeah, she was planning a vacation, and I was her last resort. I see. <laughs> well, I don't know what good it does to get married. I haven't seen my old man in three days. What do you suppose he's been doing for three days? I guess he's waiting for me to come home. Yeah, all right. <laughs> now, when I was first married, my wife was a wonderful cook. You know, she used to make wonderful pies. Yeah. Oh, rather, I ate pies till they came out of my ears. I see. Those were the good old pioneer days. Pioneer <laughs> I think I'll divorce my old man and get married again. Say, so, Mr. Howard, you think I should marry a man older than myself? Where are you going to find one? <laughs> and now, Ken, who is our next guest? Well, there's a very, very nice young lady waiting outside to meet you, Mr. Howard. I'm sure you'll be happy to meet her. Well, I guess no, I will, Ken. So while you're escorting the young lady, or escorting, I might say, to our mic, let's listen to the Townsend Quartet as they sing a Tom Howard Jr. arrangement of a Western medley. Now, that was a little bit all right, boys. And now, Ken, who is our next guest? Well, here she is, Tom, that very, very nice young lady I spoke of a moment ago. Uh, Miss Elena Dominguez. Oh, swell. How do you do, Miss Dominguez, did you say? Uh, Dominguez. Oh, Dominguez. Where are you getting such names tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, well, it's very nice that. What is your first name, please? Elena. Elena? Yes. I think I can manage that. Do you mind if I call you Elena? No, I don't. Good. How are you feeling, Elena? Fine, thank you. Well, we're very glad to have you with us. Where are you from? Would you care to tell us? 
Well, I was born in the town of Manino, the province of Coruña, Spain. Oh, thank you. But I now live in Long Island City. Oh, you now live in Long oh, yes. Island City? Uh, that I know, too. That other town is like the roots of typhoon stuff. I don't know how to it. But anyhow, we're very glad to oh, have Spain, you. Oh, Spain, Spain. Spain? Oh, she yes, was that's born charming, in yes. Spain. How do you do? Greetings. Yes. Yeah. But you can't have whipped me up a Spanish omelet. Ah, uh, Spanish omelet. Nice looking little onion. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's get on here. I don't believe we've ever had anyone on the program from Spain before, have we, Ted? Oh, what a chance you got to throw the ball down. All right. <laughs> Even saw her approach. Will you mind your business, <laughs> Harry Stoll? <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, how, long, uh, how long since you've been to Spain? That is, how long have you been in New York? Well, about 14 years. Oh, you've been here 14 years? Yes. How do you like New York? I like it very much. Good. Are your parents here with you? Yes, they are. Uh-huh. Uh, are you in any... Are you married? No, I'm not. Oh, you're not married. That's right. Could you have a cup of tea and a kiss? Ah, oh, please. <laughs> will you two shut up? I want to hear what Miss Lane's talks like. Uh, if you will keep quiet, you will hear. I want to hear what an intelligent person sounds like. Uh -huh. <laughs> then listen to me. All right. <laughs> You cut it out. Uh, tell me, uh, 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 what business are you in, or do you work, or you go to school, or just what? Yes, I work for the firm of Maniello Brothers and Merson, exporters and importers of fresh fruit and vegetables. Oh, importers and exporters of fresh... Where do you send this stuff? Oh, to all parts of the world, oh, mostly South America. Mostly South America. You sure you can get in touch with the sailor. He's got the ship, and she's got the... <laughs> I might add something there, Mr. Sheldon. I might ask you in shipping fruits and vegetables, as you say, to South America, do you ever have any trouble? I mean, they're very perishable items. Do you have any trouble? Uh, oh, yes. I suppose they get all messed up yes, once in a while. Yes, they do. Well, then, they uh, call, then they call it suck it hash. <laughs> you know, I, I saw a sailor eating a banana with the skin on. You did? I said, why don't you peel it, old boy? He said, why should I? I know what's inside. Ah. <laughs> It's worse than worse. You know, Mr. Howard, she's a nice-looking little girl, isn't she? She is a very nice girl. I have a very nice girl. She's got two ears. All right. She... <laughs> Every girl has two ears. Yeah, but not on the same side of the face. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the thing. Tell me, uh, do you remember uh, while you were in Spain, do they have radio programs in Spain? Well, at the time that I was there... They were just beginning. Oh, just beginning I in our radio. So. I suppose I haven't had television yet. Huh? No, I don't think that. Uh -huh. no. Well, they've been trying to get us to do television, but I'm afraid to take a chance with Miss McCall. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it'd just be like giving the audience or the viewers the shock treatment, and that's uh, kind of thing. <laughs> well, it's been very nice talking to you. Uh, we've enjoyed this little... Uh, uh, chat with you about Spain, and uh, we're very glad to have had you. Before you go, I'd love you to reach into the dunce cap and pick out a question for us. Would you be good enough to read the question if you don't mind? Just take your time and read it right into our dunce cap. <clears throat> ¿Eres, señora George Sand, una mujer o un hombre? I am. Uh... I'm afraid, I'm afraid, Elena, I'll have to ask you to read it in English. Uh, uh, you kind of uh, busted up the whole show here. <laughs> Just read it once again, will you please? Was Madame George Sand a man or a woman? Thank you. Was Madame George Sand a man or a woman? Mr. Howard, how old is this person? Now, wait a minute. The age doesn't make any difference. No, it does to Miss McConnell. All right. The question's not about age. I wonder why women are always afraid to tell her age. How do you take Miss McConnell? She's always shy when I ask her age. Yeah, about 30 years shy. <laughs> Is that so? How old do you guys think I am? You couldn't be that old. <laughs> oh, no, I just turned 38. Turned it? You screwed it all up? <laughs> Let's get back to the question. Well, Mr. Howard, you can say what you will. I'll bet Miss McConnell was a fine-looking woman when she was a young girl. Yeah, you can say that again. 
When I was 16, I got a beauty prize from the President of the United States. I didn't think a Lincoln went in for that sort of thing. <laughs> The question is, was Madam George Sand a man or a woman? Mr. Howard, may I ask you a question? Go right ahead. Was this Sand person a male or a female? <laughs> That's the same question I'm asking you. Oh, no, it is not. You asked us if Madam George Sand was a man or a woman. Yes. Well, what's the difference? It's the same thing. A man and a woman is the same thing. <laughs> You mixed up here. Well, you better get straightened out before you go home to your wife. All right. <laughs> Look, Madam Sand was a great French novelist. I'm going to be a novelist. You a novelist? Why not? I got a typewriter. Uh-huh. <laughs> you got legs, too, but you're not very gravel, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you got ears, but you're not Clark Gable. All right. <laughs> Look, there was a moving picture uh, about this certain uh, lady, uh, or a character, and it was called A Song to Remember. Oh, motion picture. Oh, I was, a, I was a movie actor. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was in the cinema. You're a bum. All right, I'm a cinema bum. All right. <laughs> Try and answer the question. I, I thought so. I thought you were using McConnell's tea for a minute there. Well, you tried to... In this picture, Cornell Wilde was a great musician. I'm very musical. Yeah. But when I was three years old, my mother used to spank me with a violin. She did? Yeah. That's how I got my musical background. You did. She... She need a bass fiddle now. <laughs> You know, my Uncle Westwood is a musician. He plays the shoehorn. Oh, really? What can he play on the shoehorn? Oh, he just plays footnotes. I do. We're talking, uh, talking of... <laughs> you don't talk... <laughs> well, you laughing or coddling your throat there, Mr. McCarthy. Well, <laughs> well talking, uh, talking about the movies, you know, I, I thought I had a job in the movies. You it's... thought you had a job? Yes, you see, Fred Norman called me up from the RKO Studios and said, Mr. McNaughton, you're made. Your maid. Yes. <laughs> Let me talk to your maid. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Never mind what he said. Will you step in here and end this nonsense and give our charming guest twenty five dollars and ninety cents for helping us out and thank her so much for being with us. I certainly will. Not yet. to an ignorant baritone with a voice like Bob Burns' bazooka to tell you what we mean when we say... Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Well, this is our friend, Mr. Pelagy. But we'll be back with you again next week, same time, same place on your dial. We hope you can be with us at that time. We want to thank you for listening tonight. This is Tom Howard saying goodbye and good nonsense. One week tonight over most of the